got three blinking lights. Three blinking lights. Three red lights. You know what that means? <laughs> three blinking lights. Hey, Patreon people. Hey, just a quick little uh, update. Hi, we're uh, live again. Been a little bit longer, but uh, we're back again over here at the Jeep Lab. Yeah, so, cool uh, Jeep Lab. Exactly, yes. <laughs> well, that's West Tampa Jeep. Is it a Jeep Lab shirt? No, West Tampa oh. Jeep. Oh, okay. West Tampa. Gotcha. Um, but uh, we're back here, so we're going to start the show here in a second. And this is Mark, by the way. Say hi, Mark. Hey, guys. And uh, over there is Kevin, and I'm Scott, but you know that already. Thanks again for everything you guys do. We're going to start the show here in a second, and... Hey Jeepers, welcome to show 87. Woo, 87, man. That's about uh, almost as fast as I don't drive. That's that's a bigger number than my age. <laughs> so, I am Scott, the part the slapstick parts guy, and uh, I do not read instructions. I'm always constantly yelling someone, maybe including the Jeep Lab or somebody else, help, I need help, <laughs> uh, to poor Kevin, and uh, to my directly across of me. I'm Kevin, the engineer. You know, the guy, according to Scott, uh, was around when Jeeps had dirt floors and tools were carefully selected sticks. But, <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, I do uh, tend to read the instructions, try to use the right stick, and, <laughs> and then follow those instructions. <laughs> I picture myself uh, zip tying a rock to a stick. Zip ties didn't exist, then we used those those rawhide thongs thingies to tie them down. Rawhide thongs. That's okay. what they were called, okay? And it's not Cough. the not no, the underwear. Moving on, moving on, before this dangerously spirals out of control. <laughs> so while we will share what worked for us as well as what didn't, yeah, it's up we, to you. To read the instructions, do your research. <laughs> <laughs> Please follow those instructions. Even though Scott got the intro out of order <laughs> a little bit, yeah. So uh, live and all, and live and not at all direct from the uh, Wrangler Fix Studios. We're currently over here at the G Tampa Jeep Lab with Mark Lawson, right? The, that is it. At the time, Lawson. I always want to add an R to that. You know what? Growing up, everyone always said that Mark Larson. I don't know what it is, who the famous Larson person is, but uh, yeah, I, I know the that name somewhere. But no, I always far knew side. That. If I could read yes, my name, it would be Mark side. with a K and L A R S O N, just because that's what everybody. Everybody calls or writes down. Yeah. But it's M-A-R-C, right? It is. It is. Uh, my family, uh, grandmother's from Canada, so French-Canadian. Ah. That's where the C comes from. Okay. Sweet. And then also the Lawson, like, just remember, he's the law. You know so, what? <laughs> I agree with that. I, I agree with that. So, so uh, <laughs> we're, 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 we're back over here at his shops mm -hmm. because uh, the last show where he hosted us talking to uh, Wrangler Fix <clears throat> yep. and added some very interesting and poignant color, we decided we might as well just come and talk to the master himself. <laughs> and I always forget, because I forget names so fast, and it's been a week, it's, uh, it was uh, Mark and a a Adrian? No? Kevin? Try again. No, I can't. I, 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 I forgot his name already. I'm terrible. Andrew? Andrew, Andrew. yes. There we go. If, if <laughs> Andrew, if your name's not Andrew, I apologize. It is now. <laughs> so... So, Mark, welcome to our humble little Jeep podcast. How are you today? Good, good. Thanks for having me. I know uh -huh. we've crossed paths a lot. And <laughs> yes, we kept yes. talking about doing this, and here we are again today. So yeah, it's awesome yeah, to be here. We're, we're finally here, and, and even though we've this is his second time, he actually agreed to let us come back. What a novel concept. Yeah, I, I think well, I think that the check we wrote him cleared, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, oh, man. <laughs> cough, uh, cough, 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 cough. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, um, uh, other than that, Mark, you know, I mean, you've become almost a force to be reckoned with in the Tampa Bay area. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you've come highly recommended by a lot of people. You've yep. got a very strong more following. than just your parents, yeah. more than just your yeah. parents. <laughs> Even though and they do keep me in business. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and, and me and Kevin just uh, wanted to say thank you for that day of teaching the class. Um, you know, you and your group, man, that is a very engaged and very uh, not just an established wheeler, but you guys guys knew your stuff and it was it was it was a pleasure it having that class it was, appreciate you it was nice time. being challenged and thought provoking questions that was uh that was awesome. It we really was. Lot. Yeah. And uh, talking to the, the group from West Tampa Jeepers that you guys did that for, they all loved it, too, and Good. really appreciated you guys and, and learned a lot. Um, unfortunately, not long before the class, you know, there was an incident that happened with some fellow Jeepers out on the trail. And so, you know, in a lot of their heads now, it's like, hey, we do need to take this a little bit more seriously. And, mm -hmm. and I say that when I'm out with people, but until they see something, they, they kind of, it's in the back of their mind when it should be in the front. It, yeah, it's yeah. sad, but true. It's very sad, but it is true. And we, we used a little bit of uh, the experience from that as content in one of our shows to yep. try and spur a few folks to take some time and realize that, that, you know, that little lump of wire and steel and synthetic cable on the front of their Jeep is really a 
pretty powerful tool. Yeah. It just moves slow, so everybody underestimates Ooh. what it can do. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Well, let's just put it bluntly. As we were having lunch the other day, uh, if you take the average 9,000 pound winch with a steel cable and you slid it under that Jeep, looped it over the top, and then hooked it to itself and started winching, you could probably just about cut a Jeep in half with it. Yeah. It might take a while and you'd hear lots of scary noises while it was happening. <laughs> Including the owner going, no. <laughs> exactly. What did I do? And I don't recommend doing that, but yeah, 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 yeah. there's enough power in that winch to do some serious damage as well as you need that power to do some serious rescue. Yeah. Yep. So, so anyway. So, uh, so why don't we tell us a little bit about yourself, Mark, because this obviously is your show. So why don't we start from the very beginning. When the earth crust was cooling, I'm sorry, that was... That's <laughs> that's that's what, he that's reserves that for me that normally. Yeah, yeah, that's Kevin's joke. No, sorry. No, he, he came along probably when I was a teenager or some 20-year-old or 30-year-old or, or, or married. <laughs> <laughs> 84? Holy cow, yeah. I was playing with G.I. Joes then. <laughs> uh, no, I was married two years and shifting careers around. and oh. <sighs> I'm getting old. Yeah, so am I. Oh, so. Well. <laughs> so, Mark, so, uh, so, so tell us a little bit about yourself, buddy. Yeah. What, what, what makes Mark tick? Um, well, I uh, am a Tampa native, right? so uh, I think that definitely helps a lot with the business. Is I've known a lot of people here, family reached out a lot of people here, but uh, born and raised in Tampa, went to high school here, went to college here, served in the military here, mm. so man, you can't uh, get any more uh, native to Tampa than, I guess, me, so... <laughs> So yeah. you're, you you uh, so if it's Tampa you had to be a name high. Yep. yep. Awesome. We got Air Force. So. Air Force. Definitely. And what, what, uh, what was your uh, MOS in, uh, and not by number, but by description for those that don't know uh, the code? We did some logistics and some crew chief stuff with the 135s. Okay. So, yep. so definitely KC. thought it was going to be my, my full time, you know, 20 years, but, you know, things happen, life happens, and uh, decided to go a different route. But I uh, still love the military, still have some of my closest friends are, are still in. I uh, actually get to see some this weekend, but, uh, yeah, man. A lot of family in the military as well. Pretty much everybody but my parents were military. Awesome. Wow, that's so, cool. Awesome. Wow. You'll probably hear a lot of references to my aunt in this podcast. She's still active duty Coast Guard. She's had a big influence on the Jeep Lab, and uh, she'll be here permanent fixture as soon as she retires after 30-plus years. So Awesome. Wow. awesome. Well, thank, awesome. thank her for her service for us. I'll thank all of your family yeah. for their service, and you included. Uh, personal experience, I know what you guys do and what you live through. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, we'll we'll get to Ragnarok here in a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> so other than that, man, so what what got you interested in the Jeeps? Um, my first Jeep was a CJ, um, and it was nice. It was lifted. I loved it. Had it in high school. And uh, your parents are nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was uh, go get a job, take the bus till you save up enough money to get a vehicle. So oh, it, no, my uh, mom definitely and dad was not were like no Jeep. Those things roll over and kill you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think I heard my mom say that a couple <laughs> times. But uh, <laughs> thank you, Ralph Nader. Yeah, the, the story gets a little bit closer to those lines, yeah. um, and I take 100% responsibility for it. I was going out camping. I was in a program called the Civil <coughs> Air Patrol, yep. which is you know like a junior ROTC. Um, so I did that when I started like sixth grade, but we were camping. I was in high school by then, and I was like, man, of course, taking the Jeep. I'll take the top off. I had a nice hard top, unbolted it all, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should go look at the weather this weekend, and went and checked. Yep, possibility of rain. I was like, no, I'll leave the top on. Well, didn't put the bolts back. Started driving Ooh. down I-75, heard the wind coming through the lip, and I was like, oh, no. So I grabbed up to reach on it, and there it went. Stupid little 16-year-old kid watching his hardtop fly off on I-75. <clears throat> and uh, by the time I turned around to look and make sure I didn't hit anybody, the Jeep was starting to go off the road. Oh. The grass was wet. As soon as I barely turned the wheel, the wheels locked, and I flipped it eight times going 70 miles an hour. Oh. No. Landed it right side up, was knocked out for a little bit, and uh, thankfully the gentleman behind me gathered all my stuff up. Um, I woke up, no serious injuries, Jeep was totaled, climbed out the back since the body was jammed, and then took me a long time to get back in a Jeep after that. Mm -hmm. Again, not the Jeep's fault, completely my fault, but the whole being up high, you know, those, those CJs had a little bit more of the fishbowl effect oh, yeah. when you were driving them when they were lifted, and uh, I knew I loved the Jeeps, I knew I wanted to get back into them, but... It took me a little bit to get back in one and be comfortable with them. Yeah, it's kind of tough when you're thrown on a horse like that or have a horse roll over on you, literally, yeah. eight times. Wow. Wear your safety belt. I would not be here today if I did not have my safety belt on that day. Uh -huh. 
Good wow. advertisement for that. I didn't even know this story. So <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like all of a sudden the gear shift knob of my jokes just went, no, not appropriate. Let's hey, I'm here today, stop. so you can joke about it all you want. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll just roll with those jokes. Um, <laughs> See but, what you uh, <laughs> Sorry. I, I can't help it. It's his nature. It's a sickness. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so obviously it took you some time to get back into Jeeps, you know. I mean, so basically it was after high school service and then, you know, came home and decided, decided you know what? I have too much money. Let me throw it away in a Jeep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought I got a pretty good deal on a jeep which nowadays i did i bought my <laughs> my 97 tj mm-hmm. um it was uh it's the one i still have today Tank I'll say it's TJ. Green one other. it is now od green it is bedlined i got it in 2008 actually is when i got back into the jeep stuff mm. um the mechanic side really though of everything was was thanks to my stepdad and i'll probably refer to him as dad for the rest of the show just keep it simple but he was a parts guy um yeah. oh. rose auto parts um got all the old school auto parts stores in tampa for years and years and uh, you know that first thing hey mom dad i need an oil change my mom looked at me and goes no you're going with your dad you're gonna get the car you're gonna go get the stuff to do it you mm. know and and everything on all my vehicles was always in the driveway with my dad um we didn't have youtube back in the day but you know you pull out your your chilton's manual chilton's haynes and climbers yes. yeah yeah and, <laughs> all right well you got this truck so now we need to go get your manuals and mm-hmm. that's how we pretty much did everything went through a couple motors in a truck i had and um you know i honestly i think if it weren't for him being there and my mom's mentality uh no we don't we don't just send stuff off to people we're gonna do it here if you can do it you know so um and cool. that's how the mechanic stuff and then just the love for jeeps kind of came together so how'd cool. you get started in the business though did you start with working with friends or how'd you yeah my house um at the time kind of came that place where a lot of people were coming over and getting stuff done on the weekends and mm-hmm. and at nights um actually went through a divorce i mm. uh, was married for five years we we're together about 10 but um I always wanted to do this, and without going too much into it, that was a dumb idea back then. Yeah. Um, and uh, the divorce was a great opportunity for me. I had no huge mortgage. We didn't have any kids. My bills went down dramatically. And uh, I said, you know, if I was ever going to make the jump, I don't have much to lose right now. So Wow. Um, Talk you know, about I, making you know lemonade out of lemons. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know my shop isn't the biggest; it's not the fanciest. But uh, you know I, I take pride in it. I'm slowly growing the shop. I'm getting more and more room here at the shop. Um, I love that I don't owe the Snap-on guy when he rolls by. I just wave and tell him to keep going. Um, you know, I've got my stuff, and it, it, uh, <laughs> it's it's funny you said that because my dad, thirty years my, my again, I refer to my stepdad as dad because that's just how I do it. You know, man, you are still drinking that PB Blaster, aren't you? Hey, PB Blaster, man, you guys give up on Monster and Red Bull. Get you a PB Blaster. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a PB Blaster water koozie. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh yeah, but, I forgot. Uh, not everybody can watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you come in here and it, it, he grabs it and he keeps. Going, oh no, wrong one. <laughs> I think this actually came from SEMA when we were there. I think okay. they were handing them out there. Well, why is everything I'm using this on rusting worse? <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, I, I refer to my dad because my dad's third year master tech, and he you know takes the new kids under under his his belt. And first thing he tells them, he's like, you know, the snap on. Sometimes you just got to buy a tool from them. Yeah. But the Cobalt and the snap on to are the the Sears Craftsman and the Cobalt and all those kind of husky tools fix a car just as good as the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I have to jump into that memory just on your wording choice under his belt what kind of training did he give you oh, did he strap you because usually okay, it's under okay. your wing thank you but you know you're sitting here i have visions go whack no you're not doing it whack turn it harder no no, no that's when he just works with me oh okay <laughs> see i'm only allowed snubby wrenches because of these meaty forearms you know it's like i'll, I'll turn a righty tidy into a lefty loosey real quick and after my dad constantly pairing uh, threads he literally hands me the stubby everything and i'm like but dad he goes no no my hand you, on those stubby thing. You, you don't stop when it gets tight, well, you, just yeah, go. you, you join the same club of the large, you yeah. know, industrial <laughs> strength. I just, I'm not allowed to have a breaker bar unless I'm loosening something. Hmm. But uh, no, well, no, in your case, it's a properly named tool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. a breaker bar. He breaks it, it's done. <laughs> Are you, are you tired of living with the constant heads on your bolts? <laughs> Check out the new Scott Breaker Bar. <laughs> Snap. I'm like the head hunter. <laughs> Anywho, back on track. So what you learn by you know doing, and <clears throat> you know obviously you tell this, the the uh, big uh, truck tool guy to go bye bye. You know. Yep. And so that's good. It's not good to own your soul to those people. Not well, if yeah. you can help it. Not if you can help it. But uh, yeah, I can I, I can see around here your sense of organization and your your ability to be creative probably came to you fixing the let's see kc-135s yep, were built tanker. in the 
60s. Yep. So, you know, we're, we're talking about, he, he kept aircraft flying that were built back when Vietnam was still an upcoming thing, not... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, my grandfather was in the Shadow Tankers when he was in the Air Force. Your grand? <laughs> well, I can't say anything because you know my dad was flying C one thirties and and that kind of stuff. You know, before I came along, and they're still in the in the inventory today. My buddy that's driving down from Holbert Field today is uh, AC one thirty. Yep. See, I'm trying not to make a joke with Kevin when he you know did the Air Force and they fly pterodactyls, but you know no, that no, would be can't, can't go quite that far back. But uh, no, I'm just sitting here thinking back. I do remember the predecessor to the uh, AC-130, which is the AC-47, better known as Puff the Magic Dragon. That oh, yeah. was a yeah. uh, Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah, the uh, Dakota, uh, as the Brits call it, and the. Uh, um, DC-3 is what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, the DC-3 Goonie Bird uh, is what they affectionately call. But they took a couple of them, and that was the first prototype. They took uh, the, the Goonies, and they slapped some 50 cals and a small howitzer at that time in the side, basically painted a red dot on the wingtip, and scratched crosshairs into the pilot's left uh, side view. <laughs> and that was how you aimed, and your lead, you know, they realized they needed lead, so they would come in there and do a different hatches and uh, that's why if you've ever seen one of those Scott I'm sure you have I have I've actually experienced live fire over in the theater <clears throat> and they do what's called a, a two-minute turn that's a perfect zero G inside the aircraft as you orbit and they'll put put it into a, a zero a two-minute turn put that dot line the wingtip the crosshairs check their balls and I don't mean that negatively but that's <laughs> your <laughs> instrumentation your, monitor, your instrumentation to make sure you're in a 2 minute turn and if the three things all say yeah you're on the perfect path you push the button and all Hades breaks loose. And you push the button and the plane moves to the right by a foot? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the, 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 I don't know if it's a foot, but it moves. It moves. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, and, and sorry, guys, you guys have heard this war story on the podcast before, but, uh, you know, when I was in theater, we were up on a roof in uh, in uh, Liberty. Oh, there's a man. Look at the shells. Oh, there the you go. Um, These are all from Major Sheehan, my friend. Yeah, oh, so these, this is the big That's gun. The on it right there. Wow. Well, 6 February 16. That was in Afghanistan. That was a look from a... One IED gone. <laughs> wow. But uh, we were sitting on the roof of, of our, our barracks and uh, in, at night, uh, right outside the small town of uh, Abu Ghraib. And there was some insurgency action going on over there, and we were being shelled. Uh, the mortar shells weren't reaching us, but, you know, they're falling in no man's land. And the weird thing is, is normally you'd hear the, um, the cobras come up, you know, almost immediately, and that nothing came up, another shell. And, and again, anybody, any insurgent that lobbed mortar shells from one location more than two times was either... Nobody explained the side effects of doing that, <laughs> or was just plain stupid. Yeah. And uh, we had three shells go off, and we're going. Something's wrong here. By now, the helicopter should have reduced that to rubble. And somebody said, "Well, I'm, I hear C-130 coming in." Okay, and we're like, "Well, it's got to be a Marine C-130 because they always flew at night coming in from uh, uh, Fallujah direction uh, in the Al Anbar province." And uh, we were sitting there, and I said, "What in the heck? They can't be trying to shoot down a C-130 with a mortar. Are they that crazy?" Hmm. Well, about the time uh, we were all going, where is where are the choppers? And the fourth, we heard the fourth go off. You know, and you're waiting for the explosion. Hellfire split asunder. It was an AC-130 was coming in to land, and basically, rather than clear him and bring in the choppers, there he's like, eh, I still have rounds. And they, it took him a minute to get into a two-minute turn with his pippers on the <laughs> the uh, the little four-story um, Haji Crete facility that they whoever was launching. Well, we'll never know because the building evaporated. Mm -hmm. There's no way to describe it, Scott. It did not right. blow up. It did not. It just turned into a concrete mist. It just well, it wasn't really concrete, but yeah, yeah <laughs> it just evaporated. And the strangest thing in the entire time that I was over in theater was silence. There wasn't a dog barking. There was no Amon calling prayer. There was none of the chatter that you always heard from the town. It was, and I'm sure, it was like being in the mountains of Afghanistan when the, the Taliban was hiding for you, and it was dead quiet. Hmm. And all you could hear was the breeze. And 
it was interrupted by one of my uh, m you know friends and cohorts on the roof going, "Geez, I'm glad they're on our side." <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yeah, been there, done that. Uh, know what you're talking about. Appreciate the little picture for those of you who see the video. This is awesome. We're, he's sitting here with a, a shell that's every bit of 16 inches tall and what's that? About four inches in diameter. And next to it is the. Um, how many millimeter is that shell? Would you say oh, that's is probably this is forty millimeter. In the so bottom. that's a forty this millimeter. A so that's a one hundred five howitzer, and that looks like a fifty mil. Yeah, fifty. Plan was to actually take this, yeah. make it a mug, and that a shot glass. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Trying to get his unit patch. We're going to get it laser engraved. Maybe take it over to uh, Bonnie Brock. Yep. And get the laser engraving done and clean it all yeah. up. And that'd be cool. Bonnie and Kenny, especially motorsports and especially powder coating. Yep. yep. So yep. throw them a quick little love. <laughs> oh yeah. So you. Uh, so you started the shop uh, after everything with you know going through the, the, the adventure and now the, now that you're here. So how long actually has the Jeep Lab been a business? So I probably went uh, once I got the shop going about a year okay. before I decided to do it full time. Mm -hmm. um, I kept it open. Um, what I started with was on the weekends. I was just an open kind of kept it like it was still my house. So yeah. people come over, drop by, um, have a lot of specialty tools, bigger you know sockets and stuff that everybody didn't have, and uh, kept it going like that. And you know, or evenings, and did that for about a year right. until um, you know the people that weren't friends that were coming over started paying, and I started doing really good and. I said, you know what, the stress of the day job is, and being on call 24-7 and, you know, versus doing what I love and, and being able to cover all my bills and still go to more Jeep events really, you know, opened up my schedule a lot more. Um, so next month will be two years. Awesome, man. Congratulations. That's great. Thank you. That's absolutely great. Well... You know, I haven't heard anybody complain at all about what you do here, you know, other than maybe some of your competitors, but they don't count, right? Um, well, you know what? You say competitors, but there's a lot of good shops in Tampa. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. There's they a are. a lot of good shops. And that was meant purely tongue in cheek. Uh, <laughs> Me and Ron Davis, we talk a lot of trash, but we, he's a good guy. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he even admits, you know, it's like, you know, having you uh, do co you know, go back and forth with and send work to each other is great. Oh, yeah. You know, because some days, you know, you might he might have, you know, a whole bunch and, you know, hey, look, just go see him. He'll take care of you right away. Oh, yeah. Ebb and flows. It's really good to have that good business partner like that in a way. Oh, yeah. You know, because it really, that whole paying it forward. But um, one of the things, too, on that same level is I see a lot of times on uh, the, the uh, for social media is, you know, you're there to kind of, you know, help and guide new Jeepers and, you know, help them, give them some information. Of course, you're running a business. Correct. But you're also, you're, you're forthcoming with information to help and guide some people in the right direction, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Most people would just say, well, just, just bring it by, I'll fix it. And some people don't have the cash sometimes. Yeah, and and it's hard, too. When people do post on social media, in some of our groups around here, there's 9,000 people in there. You're going to get 40 different answers, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to give a good, true answer and not make the person run around in circles until you see the vehicle. So it is right. really easy for people to say, well, bring it by. Yeah. You know, and, and there are some things people put answers on there. It could be that. Yeah. But for as a shop owner, it could be that, but honestly, I would start here first because 90% of the Jeeps that come in, this is what it is first. Right. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I always go here first, then to there, and then to that. And yeah, then no. you always add, put a little asterisk to that saying, well, you know, if once you check the quick and simple little things, mm -hmm. I'm here if you want to bring it by. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's right. the cool part. Right. Yeah. That, that's that's better than just throwing money at it. And then back, way back when, before both of you were born, that I was working in a garage, that was what we call parts changers. You had mechanics. Mechanics, but you had parts changers as well. Yeah. Parts changers couldn't diagnose to save their life, but yeah. they could swap parts real quick. <laughs> that was me with my Comanche. You know, I had an 88 Jeep Comanche. It, excuse me, lunch. <laughs> and um, basically, it was a, I had a, a, a intermittent, you know, miss. And everyone kept saying, well, it's a crankshaft sensor. Well, okay, all right, put a new crankshaft. Still had the same problem. Okay, it could be this. Well, you know, me being the parts game, I put a new coil in. Mm -hmm. What could be this? I put a new computer in. <laughs> what could be this? I put a new distributor in. Okay, I have now spent $800 in a $500 truck. Yep. I called a good old boy shop. He said, it's probably this. Try that before you do anything. I'm like, okay, but you know, money's already spent. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it was the crankshaft uh, position sensor wiring bypass I needed. That was $53 at the local Jeep dealership. <laughs> so why? I spent eight hundred dollars on a five hundred dollar five hundred dollar truck for a fifty dollar problem. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, I, I, my hat's off to anybody who is a mechanic, and you definitely <coughs> shown yourself to be a mechanic first, which means you figure out what the problem is and you address the problem, not the symptoms. So yeah. you know, that's a good thing to to hear and to see. 
So basically, besides the, the Jeep Lab, you know, you've been to a... I'm, I'm going to tease this a little bit because we're going to take a quick little uh, commercial break. But when we get back, you know, I want to hear about, you know, some of the Jeeps because I see a couple of them out there. And then you've been you've been all over the place. You've been to... Uh, have you been to Moab, obviously, yep. and yep. Uwari and all kinds of really cool stuff I want to get to. So we're going to touch yeah, that You're back. facing the wrong way. He's got a great big that says Moab <laughs> Motorsports, Moab, Utah, USA, <laughs> YouTube what? Certified Master Automotive Technician. Yeah, well, shout out to uh, Rory or Moab Motorsports. Sports. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen Trail Mater, you got to go see that machine. Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm begging him to let me come out to Moab and and work with him a month on trail recovery. So mm. Rory, please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they hear this. So we'll be right back. Is after after all, I do have the situ- uh, situational awareness of a soup can. So we'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, don't forget to check out the lovely uh, 4x4 Radio Network. Again, all the great shows on that network. And also, too, while you're on the interwebs and typing a lot, a lot of stuff into a keyboard, don't forget to check out Mark Larson at the Jeep Lab mm-hmm. and all of the social media, Facebook, Instagrams, and uh, no website yet, but just do the Facebook and Instagrams. And don't forget WranglerFix.com. Send Mark over there, you know, a quick little message. That's Mark with a K. Versus you Mark with a C. Versus Mark with a C. And check out the stuff you guys need. So with that we're going to jump back into some really cool stuff with mark with a c yep that's me all right so now that we're back um so let's talk about jeeps you see you talked a little bit about the your, your od green uh, new 97 or new, yeah new 97 tj out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> what well, was new to him then exactly so what else you got in the stable um so currently the 97 tj has been swapped out with some rubicon axles uh, from an lj um i have you'll probably see me around in an orange jku 2013 um was actually i talked about my aunt a little bit earlier it's her jeep she says it's mine now we go back and forth i build it she just pays all the stuff for it. <laughs> okay. Well. She told me to bring it home after our trip to Moab, and then in turn she bought an LJ. Uh-huh. So now she focuses on the LJ, and she just wants me to take care of that one. Um, but after well, hanging well, you out, no, using them keeps them good. You, you correct. Let them sit, they kind of go to pot. So, exactly, yeah. and that's what happened with the TJ being gone for a month. I came back and crankshaft sensor, and yeah, it, w- <laughs> it was mad at me. So, uh, but uh, yep. So I got the TJ, the JKU, uh, and then hanging out with some bad influences in Moab, uh, Kobe Gagel. Chris Bako, um, Chuck Converse over at TNT Customs uh, with some beautiful rigs um, got me inspired. And as soon as I got back, I bought an LJ tub, frame, Super Duty axles, and an LS motor in one of my shops now. So as soon as I find some time, I'd like to build that. And our plan is to have that done by King of the Hammers next year. Mm. So that's over in TJLC. Yeah. The Jeep Lab Building C. Yep. <laughs> okay. yep. It's actually in the Jeep Lab Fab shop Pop. right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool. I mean, it, it, and that's the thing. That, like, you know, LJs are, are becoming like the unicorn, the sought after ones because it's that yep. sweet spot. You know, you get a little bit of extra leg room, and you still get the 4.0 liter. You still and get a whole lot better trail and road manners <laughs> with that extra 18 inches or 16 inches. Yeah, and not all the electric nannies from all the others. You know, uh, the ex, uh, the oh, forget it. JK and JKUs, JLs and, and, JLs and JLUs. Yeah, yeah. Wheel speed sensors that go bad and steering wheel sensors that say your wheels talk to over five degrees off dead center. And, you know, and one day those will be classic items too. So yeah. I'm, I'm not bad mouthing them from that point of view, but from a guy who's still stressing over, I don't have any points to adjust. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Kevin, why do you have these matchbooks? You don't smoke. <laughs> Has to adjust the points. Yes, sir. Right. So you got Ragnarok, and then uh, isn't your uh, your other half uh, into Jeeps too? Yep, yep. Um, Andrea has a 2013. No, I'm sorry, 17 JKU as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, my sister has a white JKU as well. Um, my parents currently have. Well, now they have parts for a TJ <laughs> from five TJs that we've torn down to rebuild their TJ. Iggy. Iggy. Iggy, <laughs> yep. Iggy 2.0. Iggy, Iggy had will rise again. Uh, mechanical failure that turned into uh, some damage to the vehicle, and we are rebuilding it mm. from the ground up. So, so that one you're consulting on, because that's being built by your dad at his space, right? I'd love to say I'm consulting, but my back will tell you otherwise. I have been tearing down... <laughs> 
all the TJs <laughs> for him. No, no. But I'm saying, I'm saying the, the VIN tag is not here. It's over there. <laughs> yeah, the VIN tag's there, but his license plate's here on the shelf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been consulting. He's been hand-salting. <laughs> Until he pays me, he's not getting his tag to drive it on the road. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> oh, here comes the conversation. You know. So we're interviewing your, your dad next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get right. his side of the story. Yep, yep. There's always two sides. Oh. <laughs> So uh, I heard you talking with Mark uh, last week about um, uh, a friend of yours or something like that that uh, does welding, and they have an LJ, too. Is that another f- close family friend or just another friend? Uh, just another friend. Oh, okay, another cool, because like, LJs are everywhere around here, you know? Yeah. Not when I was hunting. I couldn't find one to save my life, but <laughs> hey, that's okay. Uh, slightly altered works. <laughs> that's okay. Eventually, we'll find your flat fender or something. Yeah, something like that. I'll, yeah. I'll find me something. Exactly. So I see you're also doing some additions to your shop. When we got here, uh, he it was real quick. Oh, 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 look, this is where my new toys are at. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that new toy would be a? That new toy is a right CNC plasma table Yep, with a water table. And he was just absolutely Sweet. heartbroken that he couldn't use his existing plasma. He had to go out and buy a new plasma. Oh, shucks. So <laughs> horrible when you have to buy a new tool. I'm just heartbroken for you and yeah. jealous as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't uh, really an expected purchase. I mean, with the Jeep Lab and, and turning wrenches and whatnot, I really enjoy it. Um, I do have a kind of uh, side to me that likes to create and design and build and um, make this it your is own. Gonna, yeah, and this is really going to open up some of that stuff. So a lot of it initially will be um, you know me playing with a couple different things, and you'll probably see some of my Jeeps with some new stuff on it. Um, and uh, and l- let me see. I'm going to do the Karnak impression. I see, I see a new tool coming. Shortly slope. after, I yeah. see a new tool. Because when you start cutting brackets, you have to bend the brackets. That's, so I can uh, see yep. a press break coming in the not too distant future. It might already be in the cart. I just have to spike that <laughs> cart. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, that's um, uh, kind of critical. Yeah, so we were actually at SEMA where I ran into you guys there yep. this year, and uh, right CNC is out of Las Vegas, and they had this set up there, and it's a brand new line, mm-hmm. uh, and it ships February seventeenth. So the new compressor is here, some of the drying systems are there, um, and basically I got the new Hypotherm XP forty five in with the machine tip for that, and man, I'm I'm itching for that thing. To I, get I'm glad Kevin knows all this because to me this is just like alphabet soup <laughs> oh no i'm sitting over here yeah you know, can't you tell i need a rag i'm selling it hey, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie this is this is new to me it's a big learning so in the process i probably should have done more research before i bought the table because i didn't realize i that my current plasma wasn't going to work i didn't realize the drying how much the dry air plays into the plasma cutting Correct. clean right. cuts mm-hmm. so i've spent you know a small fortune in a, a refrigerator dryer um some desiccants that go in there to help clean it and all as well so it's it's, it's a learning curve, so I know I'm not going to be as big as some of these other companies right off the bat, but um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and uh, I'm just curious, have you decided on what your uh, your CAD software is going to be, or are you going to work in the actual software that comes with the table? Um, I th- I yeah, they, they do offer a couple. Yeah. Um, yeah, say, I think the IT department's over there rebuilding his, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. his uh, metal cloak uh, yeah. to track bar right now. <laughs> yeah, my IT guy with my laptop <laughs> say just hi, showed IT up. department. <laughs> Chris Perez, shout out. Thank yeah. you, sir. Phantom. Uh, <laughs> there's goes the hello. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there's like Fusion 360. Uh, I'm um, learning that myself. Yeah, and then there's a couple more. So um, so basically, we're going to be uh, playing and see just which ones work really best with me and which ones I pick up. Um, the cool thing with Right CNC is they actually offer a course, mm-hmm. so I can fly out to Vegas, spend a weekend, and they'll run through oh, everything shucks. with me. Yeah. So maybe I'll go back to Vegas. <laughs> um, it, it really, if I'm struggling, I feel like then oh. it, it might be worth it. But I think I. Can but also, you know, if if you get stuck in in Fusion 360, feel free to give me a shout since I'm just down the road awesome. a little bit and I've been yeah. I've been working in Fusion 360 for about a year now. Okay. Uh, still learning. It's nothing that you learn overnight. Yeah. But most of what you do in plasma is 2D, which is called a sketch in Fusion 360 as opposed to a full uh, component, which is a 3D rendering. There's right. really not a need for 3D for cutting cuz right. the plasma is just going to follow the the single line drawing. Yeah. And that's pretty straightforward and easy to do. But but uh, yeah, then you can you have to get a uh, software that then takes a DXF unless the now Fusion 360 may go straight to the uh, was it called the G 
it's a G3 code or G5 code that's what the plasma cutter cuts. Yeah. Um, and everything that I've talked, because I've been looking into building one or buying one myself when I get my new shop next year, is you, you, you have to play with it. Don't expect it to be perfect because oh, yeah. tip speed yep. is probably the single most critical element that you control on that. So, And I look forward to getting one myself to learning that because if you cut too fast, obviously you don't cut through. If you cut too slow, you get all kinds of uh, flaring of the cut, dross underneath. There's that sweet spot, though, that you can you make a library going, okay, it's this steel, you know, yeah, hot rolled, one eight. Yeah. yeah. Problem is, is that that all depends on who's your rolling mill. <laughs> right, and and then like that's why I spent a lot of money on the whole, um, you know, air drying system too, is because they said that can play, play oh, big a big time. role into it. Big so time. you know, there's a lot of forums, and it's the same thing. You ask one question to nine thousand people, you're going to get forty different <laughs> answers. But um, I kind of went overkill, I think. But we are in Florida. I don't, you know, the humidity here is horrible, and well, thirty percent of the air is water <laughs> vapor. Yeah. So you know, you got to hey, the air is not bad. You just have to take it in small slices. Yeah, swallow in between each breath. So exactly. You, yeah. you know, well, I tell you what, when I get the table all set up maybe you can come over and we can oh, we can make a cool logo out oh, of the yeah. on the trail we can cut out a nice yeah. little oh, sign man. or something oh, like oh. that bye scott <laughs> 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 bye nothing i'm gonna be the one here t- uh, filming it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah well, well we'll have to get you a flare filter for the lens <laughs> Well, if, if any if any of the past experiences will play into this, you know you're going to rise to the challenge and you're going to tackle it and you're going to come oh, to yeah. the top. You know, because you do have that work ethic. You know, like, again, your tools set aside, the, the cleanliness of the shop that we talked about, you know, that kind of mindset t- generally tends to tackle new things very easily and adapt very quickly because yeah. you got your ducks in a row. That's the Air Force's fault. Yeah. yeah. Huh? <laughs> you know, the Army did the same thing. They kind of beat it into you. you oh, know? yeah. You remember we were talking earlier conversation about the belt? Yeah. They used a very large stick. <laughs> oh, no, this is me and driving all the way home from Cape Coral and my dad going, did you use my torque wrench last? Yeah, turn around. Dad, I'm at the Skyway. Turn around. And I turned around, went all the way back to his shop, and went back to his tool cart and put all the tools the way I did <laughs> and made sure, and uh, I did not argue. And I, and I knew what I did wrong. My dad had a specific instructions to treat your tools like money and accordingly. You treat your tools well, they'll always be there for you. I drive poor Kevin crazy. We'll be working on something. He won't let He'd me be finish. Like, I just task. had the ten mil. Where is it back oh, in your drawer? Guy? Yeah, he's oh, no, he can't come here then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, back in your it's one thing if I say, okay, I'm done with this. That's fine, but it's like, okay, I got the bolt off and I set it down, and I, okay, let me go to the next bolt. Where, 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 where? Well, it's in your magnetic tray next and, to the other one. And see, that's why when I was letting people come over here when I first started and helping them and letting them do stuff, I started making it to where it was Saturdays only because yeah. that exactly thing would happen. I'd have a customer's vehicle and I'd be working on it, and so I'm like, oh, I just need to borrow that real quick. I'm like. I'm on the clock over here. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So now customer vehicles are Tuesday through um, Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, shops open for coming by and hanging out and wrenching on Saturdays. That way, I don't get frustrated and the tools are just there. Yeah. 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 Well, and but I do. You know, it's nice that Scott picks up behind me. I got to teach him though to take the rag and wipe the grease off. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't you <laughs> dare! I already do that. <laughs> I'm using your shirt, but I do it. <laughs> so, speaking of past experiences and whatnot, man, I, I got to get because I'm, I'm just I want to get into the subject. I am chomping at the bit because you have lived the most Jeepers dreams. dreams. Yeah, you know Moab, the 24 hour, 36 hours of 20, How many numbers was it? <laughs> uh, well, two years will be set. No, 36 hours. You yeah, 36 are. hours yep. of Uari. You know, you've been to all these really cool places, man. Come on, dish, dude. You know, we we got to know. Yeah, uh, I'm very fortunate. Like I said, that was a big jump is doing this you know mm-hmm. and working nine to five I mean, you got to live you got to enjoy life um mm-hmm. and i love what i do and it, it frees up my time a little bit more to go do more experiences so yeah well some of that's actually ojt in a manner of speaking it really is it really is but um you know 36 hours you are is is more for my personal side it was mm-hmm. uh i like a challenge um i love being outdoors and uh, for those of you who don't know it was hosted by bf goodrich was the main sponsor. Um, they didn't have it this year, um, but I think it ran for three years because I did it two years and I missed the first year. Um, but it's 36 hours, uh, you name it. Um, imagine just you being out in a Jeep and uh, you're trail riding with your buddy and something happens, whether you break a you know, a U-joint in your Jeep or you have a mechanical failure or you're just on a really hard trail and you know it's you and another Jeep out there and you gotta find ways to recover and they put you in some scenarios and get your way out. Um, but a lot of it's practical stuff that can truly happen and uh, man, it was a blast. Cool, cool. So, like, uh, like, uh, like, Boab, you went out there. Was that like you drove your Jeep out there the whole time, or? 
Um, so Moab was for an event that we applied for. Um, okay. Crawl America okay. uh, was the event, so we did have to apply. Um, and they move around each year. Right. Uh, and then I saw that it was in Moab, and I'm like, hey, man, I've never been. Uh, and I started talking to my aunt. I'm like, you want to take Ragnar out there? You know, you, you want to do this? And uh, she's like, yeah, let's let's apply. And we got approved. Um, they take 30 Jeeps um, from all over. And uh, we did. We trailered our Jeep all the way out there. Uh, we wheeled it for the entire week. Uh, we ended up stopping in uh, Hogan's Off-Road Park in Oklahoma on the way home. Uh, really didn't know about it. And I saw Kenny and uh, Bonnie Brock over at Specialty. Um, that They were there a couple weeks before us. And I said, hey, it's on the way home. Let's go check it out, too. They said it was a great park. And it was. It was really nice. Um, so we spent uh, just a day there, though. Right. Um, kind of ready to get home after all of that. And, uh, and then drove back to Florida. Cool. Very nice, man. Because that's one of the things, like, you know, Florida, you know, it's not a whole lot of wheeling around here. You know, usually you have well, to there's get a, a lot of wheeling. It's just all sand. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> Flat uh, sand. Ke- Kevin got me spoiled. I went to Jasper a couple times, mm-hmm. you know, actually about three times, I think. Yeah. And that was a whole new experience for yeah. me. You know, because mo- what we have up there is like hard rock, mm-hmm. you know, and, and again, uh, um, I, I showed him no mercy in the fact that, you know, they're all, well, this is the starting trail. That's what we do for the first half of the first day to get everybody warmed up. Yeah. And then it's like, I still remember the vertical with, with Dory going up the, the wash crack. And you there was no flat surface. You had to straddle the whole thing up there and and uh, drive holding on with the side biters. You better have tires with good side tread. Yeah. And, you know, I went up it, and I'm standing at the top going, who's following? And that was Dory. Yeah. And no no fear. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah, well, she slid in once, and, and yeah. told, you know, I can remember shouting to that, pull in your mirror, huh? Pull in your mirror now. Okay. Whack. Click. And she pulled it in just in time. As went, <laughs> she said, what do I do now? I said, turn into the hill. But there's a hit. Turn into the hill. Turn your wheels hard and start, and just punch it. And she did, and she came right up out of it and climbed. And she got at the top and was doing quite a little victory dance. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing about traveling is it's to me it's always challenging. You go to a different place. You, you know, uh, when I went to Moab, I you know I I, I like. I like not being the leader. Yeah. I was able to be a follower. You know, there's a lot yeah. of pressure when you're the trail leader. You're the guy spotting. Amen. You know, you feel a sense of responsibility <laughs> yep. for some of these your, your friends' vehicles. And at Moab, I was able to take a back step. Not a lot of people were, "Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Can you help me? Can you do it?" You know. And uh, even though I enjoy helping people, but I took a step back and I learned a lot as a wheeler. Um, it was like hot sandpaper. We were out there in June, so some of the angles you're running, you're like, "Oh my God, I." feel like the TJ should have rolled backwards already, you know, that's mm-hmm. next to me, and it didn't, you know, whereas here in Florida, you went something that steep, either you're slipping out from underneath you, or you are flipping it back. Because of the, the sink factor, you don't realize that your angle of attacks, yeah. in aircraft terms, your angle of attacks higher than what it appears when you're on sand. Yeah. The yeah. rock, slick rock's at least solid, you yeah. know. Um, so how did you enjoy climbing rocks and, and doing that kind of broken rock? Oh, I loved it. The first day the group threw us to the wolves, for those who don't know, we went to a Moab Rim on mm, day one. So the rim on day one. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, that's the, no mercy. <laughs> yeah, um, we've got a video of Ragnar's front tire about three foot off the ground. Yeah, with about a jeep's length behind it from the back of the cliff. So that was interesting. <laughs> um, that was my aunt was driving. I was spotting. So uh, it's uh, again, thank you, Chuck Converse. He was probably the best spotter leader we could have had. That guy knows that place pretty well. But uh, and so how, it was how different. Long were I loved you, it. Were you in the cardiac ward after that? <laughs> No, I, hey, I'm not going to lie. I think I walked most of Moab Rim oh. um, because I was spotting. My aunt only trusts me as her spotter. Um, so, uh, yeah, I did a lot of spotting that day. I did a lot of walking yes. that day. Um, but uh, for those who don't know, Moab Rim, you have to come right back down it. Mm-hmm. So it's a different you know thing going up it, and then it's a whole different plan of attack coming down yeah, it. Yeah, because now all of a sudden, instead of being nose-heavy uphill, you're nose-heavy downhill. Yep. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you feel that back, those back tires. Kind of start little, floating. You're like, oh, because uh, yeah. Ask Jason Meeks about it in his two door two door JK. Did he Ooh. actually? He did pretty well. He did pretty well. He standing on the nose. No, he didn't. He didn't. But uh, got close. He, he drove that thing pretty well. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we we had a similar experience when Dory and I first started, you know, jeeping with groups in this area. You know, we went out with a, a, a now defunct cl- uh, group, and uh, Walt, yeah, he gimmick. He do you know Walt? Gimmick? Mm-hmm. No. He had Yellow Dog, the yellow Jeep Rubicon, and he's like, you know, just follow us, just put it in second gear, low, and I'll and I'll follow you through. We're bone stock Rubicon at the time, you know, four door, and so we go down this hill, and it's it's I mean it's it's near forty five. I mean it's a whole nine yards. I feel the back end getting light, and Dory's like, what do we do? I said, follow Walt, follow Walt, because Dory's driving. We're going up and down these climbs, and it's an R pit. 
uh, off 75. Okay. And we're going all these crazy jumps, and one year he goes, you know, it goes a hard left and, and straight up another steep, almost, you know, almost vertical climb. He goes right up, and we go right up it, and, you know, a little bit of skinny pedal, because again, we bombed out a little bit, and then we get to a certain stop. He jumps out of the Jeep. He goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot you were behind me. And we're, we're just sitting here, like, going, <laughs> you know, freaking out. He's like, I am so sorry. I, I literally forgot you were behind. Hold that thought. We have a small crisis. Okay. So, freeze. Ah, yes, freeze. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Go ahead and pause. I changed batteries. That must be the... <coughs> Do you have a third battery? Yes. Do you want me to leave these other ones going? You can, yeah. It'll be quick. And I can leave that on the... And yeah, we're almost done now, so... Yeah. You see, this guy's supposed to take this turn. All right, we can let it run now. Okay. Well, while he's busy there. I tried to do it again. Are we recording? Nope. Go ahead. Do you want to talk about? Oh, sorry about that, folks. We <laughs> looked over and the main camera, the battery was dead. And listen to that compressor. If there's any doubt that we're in a real working shop, as soon as we uh, we pause to change the battery, he's got two people out there waiting <laughs> for work. Hey, this, so, is, this is a, this is a, 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 a uh, work in progress shop. Yeah, yeah it is. And so uh, Mark will be back uh, shortly. Yeah. We can probably stop these. <coughs> you have all your sounds turned off. I'm used to the hearing the beeps. Sorry. That's on. There. Red, 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 red. red. All right. Hey, folks, we're back. Yeah. Sorry for the delay of a dead battery and customers. <laughs> exactly. This is a true <laughs> shop that comes by. <laughs> and, you know, business takes pleasure. And the cool thing is, is, like, your customers all know you by name, and they're really cool people. And it's it's interesting how a shop can almost become part of a, part of the community. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things I want to cover. I about think he's how, beyond community. I think he's part of the family. It, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that Another a, satisfied customer. Yeah, I don't know if he knows we're actually recording, but oh, it it's, all, <laughs> it's all part of the experience, man. But, you know, I see a lot of times where, you know, again, a lot of times you, you get into a situation with social media, people are like, you know, oh, try this guy, try this guy. You're one of the first up there. You know, and, yeah. and I know I've been around the the social media enough to know that you know when someone it, 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 it I don't know where I'm going with this, but the point is that your customers are family, like you talked about, yeah. and they will go to bat for you no matter what. Yeah, and that's to, to find good a good customer base like that is kind of rare nowadays because you know everyone's so quick to drop somebody because of the a bad service or whatever. It's cool to actually have that. Almost like you're uh, the the uh, Jeep Lab Army. <laughs> for oh, like yeah. a better term. It's a following, yeah. uh, and a and a clientele base rather than a customer base. Yeah, you know, I that. think this. See, I like the way he can bring it up in three words. I'm the one that stumbles <laughs> over an entire. You know, I trip over a dictionary. <laughs> Thank well, you. if you read it instead of used it as a doorstop, you maybe you wouldn't trip over it so much. <laughs> Yeah, I think my customer base and uh, that have now become, you know, basically friends. And I think the reason why they're very loyal is I, I try to not just be the shop. I try to help them understand the product that they're getting. Um, there's a lot of people that want to say, hey, go buy X brand because it's the best out there. You're right. But you still should understand why you bought X brand, why X brand benefits you in this situation. Um, whereas I make more money if I sell this brand because my profit percentage is better. So let me just sell you that yeah and we know so, a few things like that yeah and so i think that goes a long way because the customer feels like hey this guy actually spent some time you know and and explain things to me and and people i find that people don't don't mind spending a little bit more money if they fully understand why yeah, yeah. you know um and that's the thing about the jeep market and especially our market here in tampa alone is um you've got people that have Jeeps that just want to go to the beach and take the top off. You've mm -hmm. got people who want to go hang out at the mall and look beautiful. Uh, you got people who want to go out of state and, you know, and take their Jeep. So there's a lot of different Jeepers we have here. Um, and, uh, and it works and, and they're awesome. And, and no folks, I did not prep him for that. This is his <laughs> opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, that's, that's my thing is, you know, yeah. first thing out of the box is what do you want to do with Jeep? How are you going to use your Jeep? Yeah. Because 
what you choose to do varies depending on what you want to do with the Jeep. You wouldn't set up a... a like you said, a daily driver, one that mom wants a minivan that looks cooler than a, than a minivan, right. so she wants this look, but you know that that lever or by the side of the transmission hump that has, you know, 2W, 4W, some X thingy, it's never going to get touched. So, right. you know, that person needs one type of a system. You know, the other guy that comes in here and you take one look at his Jeep and it's more dent than body panel. And <laughs> Well, and I like that you guys say that because I feel like when I ask that question, it may come off um, not the right way. Like, okay, well, how much money do you have and what do you want to do? Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, this guy is just trying to sell, sell me, me as much as he can. And really, that's not it at all. Yeah. I need to know your budget. Yep. And then what I do as a professional, I put you in the best thing for that budget. For that budget. That is my goal as a and shop. And for that need for right. that use. And then that's the other thing too is what do you plan on doing with this because you know we can slow down the process. I know a lot of us get these Jeeps and we want to go 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 and build 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 right, build right. but you know a lot of people do get involved and it's the casual trip to Citrus or Croom which are local spots here in Tampa mm -hmm. um, and then you see them two years down the road and they're in Moab and they're in Arizona and they've probably gone through three different lifts. Yep. Yeah. Whereas if we could have sat down and maybe waited a little bit longer yeah. and we could have saved you a lot of money and a lot of less time at the shop, which might hurt me in the long run business wise, but I doubt it. But like <laughs> being honest and open and yeah. communicating and talking back and forth and really sitting down um, will go a long way for them as a customer. I mean, my phone, I'm surprised, I guess it's on silent right now, but when I'm in here in the shop, I'm a one man band for the most part and it blows up all day long with so mm -hmm. many people just, well, what do you think about this? Someone told me this. You know, it's like, come by. Come by. Let's yeah. talk. Let's have a normal conversation and hang out and really figure out what you want to do and what's going to work best for you. Because the last thing I want is for you to go bankrupt trying to build a Jeep, and then you have to sell the Jeep, and then you're no longer mm -hmm. a well, Jeeper. And we talked about this last show, and, and and Kevin and I are big proponents of this, is that be forthcoming with the information, mm -hmm. ask questions, and we talk about it, we expound on this a thousand times. It's okay to bench build. Yeah. You know, I think bench building is the with greatest exercise people. out there. And the more information people give to you, the more you can plan for the future. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I, I make the joke uh, uh, several times is I've spent almost $1,500 on my budget lift that I've just cobbled together by a bunch of crud that I could have just saved a little extra and bought the nicer lift to begin with. Instead, I'm now out 1500 bucks plus the new lift I'm going to purchase. Yep. So... Take that time to talk to you. Be forthcoming with and be honest with yourself. You're going to change as a wheeler. Well, and a lot of people who are new to the Jeep community will see stuff they like. Yeah. I like that. I want that. But what I always say is in a couple months or a couple experiences or a couple events, they find stuff that they love. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. then they wasted money because I'd I but I love that one. Mm -hmm. And I only liked that one. And this is where we talked about like uh, being forthcoming with information and honest with yourself because you brought up something that me and Kevin earlier when I said, what is the one thing you want people to take away from this show and one biggest piece of advice you could give people? Oh, yeah. And you said the best thing. And, and, and some people will, well, wait a minute. He just wanted me to promise to do all this stuff and, and, and talk to you and buy this stuff and buy that. It does, it's, it's a balancing act. Yep. You talked about how the, the one thing you wish people would do more is learn about their Jeep. 100%. Get out there and learn it. So what you mean by that is, like, go out and experience your Jeep as it is. Mm -hmm. You'll find out that a stock Jeep is remarkably capable. And oh, grow yeah. the Jeep with your skills. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll let you talk about what, 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 yeah, you, what you, you I've been waiting that. all show long to, to talk about that one. Yeah, we you mentioned it earlier. And, uh, you know, uh, you said a stock Jeep is very capable. I was in Roush Creek, Pennsylvania not too long ago. And there was a gentleman in a stock Jeep. And I, you know... It's been a while since I'd been in a stock Jeep, and I was surprised at this gentleman, what he was able to do in this stock Jeep, because he knew how to drive it. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, we've got people around here that are throwing, you know, Dana 60s under their Jeep, and they don't even know how to do it. They don't know what to use. It's like, you can't just throw money at these things and expect them to get you out of every situation, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it, it's crazy, because Jeeping is not cheap. <laughs> right? No. But if some no. people spent some time, especially with the internet now, YouTube, and um, there's a lot of schools out there. Unfortunately, this is one of my things I want to work on. Down here in the South, there's not a lot of schools that teach about recovery, that teach about, um, you know, wheeling and off-roading. And yeah, we don't have the best of places to do it, but there's some scenarios you can put yourself into uh -huh. to, to better your, your skills and your abilities. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, if you can't get your Jeep all the way out to Moab, go out there and ride with somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people out there that you
you can meet on the internet and I can send you in their direction. I'm sure they'd love to take you out on the trail and show you some awesome things. And, and, uh, but yeah, if you spend some of the money that these guys are throwing, these women are throwing at Jeeps on learning how to Jeep, I think they'd be able to do a lot more. Uh, and they'd appreciate it a lot more too. I Sounds mean, like someone's taking a floor jack out for a brisk afternoon. Yeah, drag. I think he is. <laughs> That's Sorry. fine. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, you know, I, I've talked to a couple people local that there's some organizations that will train and certify you as, as recovery coaches and, and instructors. And uh, that's something on my personal side I'd like to do, um, which also kind of tied into the whole trail team challenge mm-hmm. that I hosted last year. Uh, we postponed it this year just because it's – since the Jeep Ranch closed, it's been hard to find a spot that's yeah. not going to – cost a lot of money, which in turn is going to cost the competitors a lot of money, Yep. Um, but a lot of insurance and logistics and whatnot. So we're, we're postponing it, but the trail team challenge was very similar to the 36 hours of URI, um, as uh, what we did is you and a buddy were out on a trail, mm-hmm. and we gave them 30 challenges, uh, and they had basically two days to complete the 30 challenges. And uh, a lot of the guys had a blast and loved it and been begging for the next one to come and talking to their buddies. So I'm kind of sad that I've got to move it. But again, I, I did mention I want to go to King of Hammers next year, which is February as well. And that's when Trail Team Challenge is. So trying to find a date that works with the community to, to be able to grow it. But uh, Well, one of the places uh, where uh, Crawling for the Fallen was, the firm actually uh, had a little ad coming up that where they're ho- uh, going to start hosting. It looked like, you know, again, check the website for exact information about um, uh, off-road classes you know and like you know how to stuff so again you know double check with them to make sure but you know they they want to get out there and get that information known so people can learn their jeeps but again it it all comes down to if you want to put 60s on your jeep and and go to the mall and have it shiny and be the new that's your that's cool but i agree with you is that Grow with your Jeep. Yes. Take it out. Learn it factory, and then okay. What 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 would be the best way for me to spend the money once, so I can upgrade that later? And yeah. the, I'm kind of leading more towards. And I'm seeing a lot of this actually on social media. Is it's the biggest expense, and it's the the probably that be the best expense is get your bumper and get your winch. Mm-hmm. Just get that out of the way. Yep. You know, it'll sit and look fine on a factory Jeep, and you can use it, and it'll that piece of, of equipment will come in handy more than a lift or bigger tires will. Yep, functional. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those kind of things, and again, Kevin will say fire extinguisher, which he's right. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I still, to this day, <laughs> think that should be standard equipment. Yeah. That, that really shouldn't be optional, um, uh, but that's just mine. You all have heard it on the show before. I Mine is mounted on my roll cage in visual sight of somebody outside the jeep yes it means it could be still stolen but i'll buy another one yep i'd rather have it where it can be grabbed in a hurry um and uh the only thing and you say fire extinguisher sure as we hear a fire engine go by behind us (laughs) um the one thing i'll caution everybody i just got to add this little safety tidbit if you got smoke coming out the hood please i know you're going to unlatch it Mm -hmm. don't flip the hood up that burst of oxygen will usually cause a fireball in your face, and then you can't rescue your Jeep or yourself. Yeah. So follow oh. the rules on the extinguisher. If you crack the hood open just an inch and shoot under the hood lid, then open the hood slowly. Yeah. Fire extinguisher ready. But with that, I get away from that. You know, well, I want to tag on to your fire extinguisher thing because before this, my full-time job was working for a fire company, mm. and uh, I saw a gentleman on YouTube watch his JKU go down in flames in the desert. I forget the gentleman's name, but uh, fire extinguishers are nice, but make sure you get one that actually do something. Those little two pounders will not do anything to your Jeep. You need at least, at least a five to 10. In some of the events, like you are, we had to have a minimum of a 10 pounder and it had to be within reach of the driver. Mm -hmm. Those were the specific rules. I think even at Crawl America, we had to have a minimum fire extinguisher and it had to be in reach of of the driver. Um, So those are big things as well. Uh, And in the fire industry that I did, we did a lot of suppression systems Mm -hmm. and they make those for Jeeps. I'm surprised that some of these people that spend as much money as they do on their rigs do not have suppression systems. So these are the ones with the bottles and the the pull cord as well as the the, the automatic releases of a fire under hood or stuff like that. Correct, yeah. They've got got tips where if it gets to a certain temperature, they'll automatically discharge. Uh, You don't even have to open the hood. Um, There's different chemicals that you can get that will not damage your electronics. Yep. Um, So, Hmm. I mean, you can literally, it's it's a very simple kit to install. It's got braided steel lines that go and you just locate them wherever you want uh, and then yeah if you have to discharge a system you discharge a system potentially save your Jeep your life and refill the bottle down the road you can get them refilled around town oh that's that's a very good thing that I did not know, I yeah, know. I'm for a couple hundred bucks you can save a hundred thousand dollar rig well think of it this way most 
if not uh, are between 500 to 250 deductible a 200 dollars fire system at least saves you your deductible yeah <laughs> you know i mean come on that's, yeah. yeah i mean and two, the time and and a lot of jeepers you know do a lot of stuff at home like the time that you put into these rigs and the memories that you've made with your family out on the trails to sit there and go because you bought a f- two pound fire extinguisher you weren't able to save it hmm. god that's well that's first i've heard the two pounder didn't because i worked with our fire team on base and they were I guess it depends on when you catch it. Exactly. Because yeah. if if yeah. if I catch it early, a two pounder will put out, and I've used it on a vehicle. Unfortunately, never on mine. Yeah. Well, mine's been replaced because I've grabbed it and used it on someone else's. But if you if you're specifically talking about a fully engulfed, yeah, I could see how a ten pounder might not be enough. Yeah. Uh, but no, that's good to know. That's so it, know. It, it's your level of what you think you may need, basically. Oh no, I, well, I'm probably going to upgrade at least a five. Yeah. Um, because, uh, but you're gonna sell the two pounder? <laughs> <laughs> no, I might go out and practice with <laughs> he it. Might, he might keep yeah. it as a backup, yeah, just hitting me over case. the head. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I I, it's just convenient for, for those one offs. And like I yeah. say, we, we, we came upon a rig, um, that was. It wasn't a Jeep, it was a truck, and he was smoldering on the side of the road and pulled over to see if it would help, and the person wanted to open the hood, and we, you know, as soon as you crack the hood open, I saw orange, and I'm like, well, here goes, and we dumped the whole canister underneath, about half of it at first, and then started lifting the hood to where I could see and targeted it, and he'd had a ruptured fuel line that had leaked down onto the gas, uh, onto the exhaust manifold, and funny how it doesn't go off immediately. Just because you vaporize it, it has to have an ignition source, but eventually he he had an ignition apparently in it. Yeah. It flashed and and the leak wasn't that big, so I was able to to get it under control. But even as we oh. sat there, you know, emptying the thing out, I could see where the the uh, dry powder just kept getting wet because <laughs> the gas was still running. And I said, Oof. "Did you turn the key off? Uh, well, no, I go turn it off now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the pump shuts down. <laughs> Oh, wow. Cool. But, uh, yeah, so, no, I, I could see that because we used every last drop out of that two-pounder and had that top fire flared again, uh, the best I could have done was close the hood and hopefully smother it. Wish it goodbye. Yeah, I mean, think about it if you're off-road, too, and, and we're here in Florida and it's dry out. You could start um, the whole citrus on fire again. Yeah, you, you very much could. We went wheeling at three, uh, three Lakes Wildlife Management area one time, and it was very wet. It was right after a hurricane, and we were pretty much wheeling in the swamp. Um, and when we got out, we stopped for a minute before we got back on the road. And I said, hey, guys, pull all that stuff out from underneath your Jeep, oh, yes. all that grass. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if the, um, cats the person wasn't listening or not, but we got you know halfway down the road. We were all going to grab lunch, and uh, we pulled into the parking lot, and his brand-new JKU Boom. that was two weeks old had a flame underneath it. And it was because all that dried grass had already dried up sitting on his heat shield, and it caught fire. Um, and I immediately grabbed our, my fire extinguisher and put it out and... Save the guy's Jeep, but it was that quick, man. And yeah, it yeah. happens. Well, I can still remember from the early days of cats when they were newer and higher temperature without shielding, and you used to have restrictions of do not drive in a in a grass field. Don't take this off road because just you driving across, you know, dry grass, you could actually start a field fire. Yep. Actually, the new J the JKs when they first came out had a recall about it because the uh, shields for the uh, trans transmission or transfer case, one of them was actually a big sheet of sheet metal. And it, like was, it was scooping up and then right there by the catalytic converter. So now if you look at our newer JK, you get that one bar with a tiny little landing strip of metal. Mm-hmm. And that's all you get now. Yep. So you know. stuff falls out the other side. Yeah. But, um, you know, Mark, we really appreciate having you on the show this, man. Thanks this for time. having me, guys. Anything else you want to talk about real quickly? or? Uh, no, just Jeep community is a great community. I met a lot of great people in it. Um, and it's got a little bit of everybody in it. So that's the cool thing is is uh, seeing all different types of Jeeps and Jeepers out there and families and single individuals and um, just uh, love the community. And if you guys have questions, too, I mean, feel free to hit me up. Well, um, and, and that's that begs the question, Mark, uh, regardless, obviously, for those in the Tampa region. But if you're not in the Tampa region and you're traveling over here and bringing your Jeep or just want to stop by, how do they find you and how do they get a hold of you? Um, so I mainly use social media. So okay. I've got Facebook. Uh, the Tampa Jeep Lab is our Facebook page. So with um, the word the... Tampa Jeep Lab. Four words? Yeah. Okay. On yep. there. And then Instagram is Tampa Jeep Lab. Tampa Jeep.
Jeep Lab. So. Uh, and then if you're interested in some of my crazy trips to Moab and 36 Hours of URI and King of Hammers next year, we have a page called Team Jeep Lab. Okay. Uh, so that's what I do all my competition stuff on and kind of my stuff off the clock shenanigans. Okay. So there'll be some <laughs> stuff on there. So, um, folks, there you go. That's how you get a hold of him, and that's yep. how you uh, how you get uh, get some answers and get a, you know if you need him, come out and see him. He is a, a great shop here in the Tampa region. He's uh, kind of a well, I, he, he's he's kind of between Tampa and Brandon is yeah. the best way to describe it. <laughs> Hard Rock Casino. That's what I tell everybody. I'm near the Hard Rock Casino. Well, that's there true. Go. There's a landmark for you. Hard Rock Casino. He's northwest of Hard Rock. Yep. Yeah. That sounds about right. A lot of my customers spend their money there while they're waiting on their Jeep. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Hopefully they're winning while they're there. And they're yeah, there. I was going to say, otherwise they may be coming back in saying, well, here's my title. <laughs> Can I pick up my Jeep another day? <laughs> 25, 25 days, uh, $25 a day storage. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ruthless. So, <laughs> you are that. But uh, yeah, social media is the big thing. I don't have a website, um, but hit me up on social media anytime or my private page. Uh, answer questions. Um, and that's the one thing I want to add to. I am a shop owner, but for all the new Jeepers out there, get multiple opinions, please. Get multiple opinions. Mm -hmm. um, I've made mistakes too, but uh, you know, sticking up and, and honoring and fixing those mistakes is a big thing. But get multiple opinions because I don't like people seeing taken advantage of. And uh, there's could be other things out there that it could be before you start spending a lot of money. That's yeah. good. A lot That's of money. Good. Yeah, you yeah. want to get the mechanic who can actually determine the cause, correct, and not just fix a symptom. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. So. Sweet. Well, with that, Kevin, I think it's time we uh, put the Jeep in four low. What do you think? Lock hubs and hit the trail. I'm <laughs> ready for that any day. You know that. And don't forget, take your memories, pictures, and your trash when you leave the trail. Did I get it right that time? You or did. Still? You actually I got, got it, it right, right that time. And I was able to get it out, too, without mumbling on my words. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> folks, uh, appreciate that. And uh, look forward to uh, the next couple of shows. We'll be getting that out there soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, heavens. That's going to put us all the way into March. Wow. This year's know, flying by. <laughs> Well, March has significance for me because I have to add another digit to the age. So <laughs> mm. Mm. that officially makes me even older. Uh, you know, I'm going to spare you the Smithsonian joke. All right, so uh, I like the Smithsonian. It's a really cool place. It is. <laughs> All right, guys. Last week. And guys, you have a very fun time, and we will catch you on the next episode of On the Trail with Kevin and Scott. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.